Welcome, welcome everyone. Good morning to you all and nice to see you all joining us this morning. And I'd like to welcome you to our Thursday morning Mind the Moment gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. And this is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. And I am Suzanne Rowe Pellicino, and very happy to be here on most Thursdays with our own Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim's Mindfulness Program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. Glad to be glad to be back. I was out last Thursday uh, helping my mom who had a bad fall and broke her hip. So um, it's uh, but it's good to be back. Yeah, it's great to have you back with us. So this morning, as always, Tara will start us off with a question to get the group chatting together. And yeah. then after that, she'll lead us in a guided practice. And then we'll at the end, we'll have time for questions and comments. So if you're interested in seeing those comments as they come in, just go to the bottom of your screen and click on the chat. And you can click on the drop down menu and uh, choose panelists and attendees. And that will give you the option to see the comments and questions as they come in. So what question would you like to start us off with this morning, Tara? Uh, so I um, was thinking, you know, I woke up this morning and I could really, I don't have air conditioning in my house. So I um, had all the windows up last night, of course, and could really, uh, feel that cool air rushing in early, early this morning. And it just, it felt so good, like such a relief. And uh, just hearing all the sounds of summer, which is one of the, the nice things about having having all the windows. Uh, but, but the past, I think it was four straight days of pretty oppressive heat. And I'm just curious, uh, what's one or two things that you did to kind of, uh, help with the unpleasantness of the heat to, to uh, make it a little bit more bearable for yourself and in, in ways that you might've used your practice of awareness and mindfulness. Um, and Suzanne, I thought I would start with you and just have you weigh in on this. Like how, how have the past few days been and is there a way you brought your practice to bear? Yeah, well, I, I found, it, as it, you were mentioning, it's very early in the year for us to be having such extreme yes, heat. Yeah. Um, so I have been in the mode of getting outside every morning and I would get out extra early mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, feel a, a coolness or some breeze or something that was a little bit more um, comfortable. And also I would walk in, in the shade and walk in the forest just because... I wanted to try to keep away from the sun. So those are the few things that I would do. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, getting outside, but, but finding shaded spots, it, um, you know, especially uh, where I live, there are a lot of trees. So that was, that was pretty easy to do. And it really makes a difference. You know, those trees shelter us from that heat and um, still, of course, felt the warmth. Um, I think the other thing, and this sort of reminds me a bit of um, being on a meditation retreat and one of the teachers talking about being in Burma and being on a train and just the oppressive, oppressive heat on the train. And Suzanne, you might've been on this retreat. Yeah. And there was a point where a whole group of like five or so monks got on to the train and they were completely unperturbed by the heat. She said it was beyond anything she had ever, ever seen in her life that they, you know, everybody else was just like sweltering and they were completely unper um, not perturbed by the heat. And I keep thinking uh, that's a story I often think of during the heat in that it's um, in a way, you know, dropping the resistance to the unpleasantness because it can't be changed, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, there are certain things you can do, but, but it's yeah. like this releasing the resistance and being with what feels unpleasant. Um, 
And getting more facility with that is such a big part of this practice. So um, I think trying to be smart and find shade and then releasing the resistance to the oppress oppressive heat. Mm. Yeah, what a, what a life lesson that is for so many things we go through. For, huh? so, for so many things. In fact, I you know, will say even during this period with my mom, which has been really intense, um, you know, really working with this practice, like wishing it didn't happen, but of course it did. So dropping the resistance, uh, it's just, con it's a constant uh, looking. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of the folks have mentioned, and this is something I do as well, counting down the days, being able to look forward to cooler days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. nice to see the weather forecast sometimes with that. Trying to get outside early and sit in the grass with my dog and read. Yeah. Love to look into the trees and the leaves and feel the cool grass on my feet. Um, replacing dead plants in my community garden um, with a playlist and dancing. So nice. And walking one mile through the woods um, at my work building. Taking yeah, care of flowers. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, um, this morning kind of, um, let me just get my timer set up here. Um, so this morning when I, I mentioned I, I have all the windows up and when I woke up all like the sounds of the summer um, felt so comforting to me because I have felt pretty, you know, contracted and, uh, you know, sad and kind of stressed about my mom uh, and really trying, you know, work in the practice as best I can to, to turn toward it, which sounds counterintuitive, but I know from history of practicing that it's actually not counterintuitive. There's an allowance, a receptivity, uh, and that, um, you know, I can, I can hold all of this. And I thought today I would do just, just an open awareness practice. So instead of having a narrow focus just on breath uh, or something else, um, what I thought I would do is just um, guide us through open awareness practice, which is simply, you're just widening the lens of focus. So every thought, emotion, body, sensation, sound is in your field of awareness. And, and you will naturally go into storying or narrative because that, that just happens whether you're doing a narrow focus or a wide angle. And each time you see it, you just go, oh, thinking, just a simple, oh, thinking, release the story and just return to open, spacious awareness, receptive to sound. Um, and if you want to land on sound, if you're in a uh, environment where you can hear the sounds of the summer, you can just let that be for the whole for the whole practice. Um, yeah, but as body sensations occur, you know, awareness of that. So it's really just wide angle lens. All right. So um, let's go ahead and settle in and find a posture that feels best for you. And remember that standing is, also, is always a good posture, especially if you're sleepy this morning. Um, otherwise uh, seated in a way that is upright and engaged as opposed to resting on the back of a chair. You wanna hold yourself upright, which just keeps more alertness there. Eyes can be open or closed. So, you know, if you happen to be outside or near a window and you want to keep the eyes open, you can absolutely do that. And seeing, hearing, um, feeling sensations, that's all part of the open experience. So whatever uh, you decide to do um, with eyes is fine. So open um, or closed. Just uh, begin by taking two deep breaths on your own and make that exhalation double the length of the inhalation. And, and I, I always start this way as a way to just settle any surface tension.
And let your breath resume to a pattern. Uh, your body will regulate it. Just let your uh, body uh, regulate your breathing. So breathing in, breathing out in a way that is natural, that's not forced. However, your breathing is fine. Just wide angle lens of attention over your whole body, noticing the points of contact with the body and the surface, could be the soles of the feet or all along the back of the body and the chair, that subtle point of connection. Just aware of what that feels like. Then aware of physical sensations in your body from the activity so far this morning. Pulsing, vibration, tingling, temperature. And moving awareness from whole body now to sound outside of the, in the room or outside of the room that you're in. Receptive, curious, open awareness. So I'll be silent for the next few minutes and just receiving sound, receiving thought, you know, in this practice thought, thinking is often considered a sense experience, just like sight or hearing. And as you find yourself in a narrative of the past or the future, not a problem. You can just Label it and return to open, spacious, receptive, curious, wide angle lens awareness.
Noticing where the mind is. Releasing thought and just opening up to sound sensation. And again, noticing where the mind is, thinking, and returning to this open, spacious, receptive awareness. And as we bring this practice to a close, may we be peaceful and at ease. May our heart be soft and open. May we be safe and protected and our bodies healthy and strong. 
for all of those known and unknown to us. May they be peaceful and at ease. May their heart be soft and open. May they be safe and protected. May their bodies healthy and strong. And may any benefit of our practice be for all beings everywhere. As you feel ready, allowing the eyes to open if they happen to be closed, maybe taking a moment just to stretch. And if your eyes were closed, sometimes it's helpful just to reacclimate by looking around and, um, and reconnecting. So one thing I, um, that I just thought of while I was practicing was the other thing that I think is helpful in heat waves where anytime anything is unpleasant, and this is where open awareness practice is really valuable, is that you see that it has a nature to change and that it will never always be statically hot. Like that is, it will never always be hot. You will never always have that muscle cramp. Uh, you will never always have that mind state, you know, that especially when there's unpleasantness happening. So part of what we see in open awareness is that there is a, there is a rising and a passing of thoughts, emotions, and body sensations in const constantly. Um, and we see that in nature, if we're sitting outside taking in sound, um, that those sounds are constantly changing. Even, you know, occasionally there's a bird around that's making a loud squawking sound that seems like it'll never stop. And then of course, all of a sudden it does, it goes away, it flies. Um, so that was one thing. And the other is I wanted to ask if anybody saw the solar eclipse this morning. Just out of curiosity, I did get up at 5.30 and couldn't see it. I think it might have been too cloudy where I was. But anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you brought up the um, unpleasant because many times when I'm practicing in the morning, there's um, leaf blowers going on in my neighborhood. And that's just, that there are noises that I can sit with. And that's one noise I have a really difficult time with. Yeah. And, um, and of course it stops. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, when yeah. When you do more of the open awareness that, you know, we're letting in all those sounds and, um, right. That was one that I was just well, not my favorite sound. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And like how, again, it's not like you're going to go over to your neighbor and say, I'm in the middle of meditation, please stop. Right, like so, that's where you don't have control, and then how th there might be a way to relate to that a little bit more, uh, with more, you know, actually just hearing as opposed to oh, it's awful, I can't stand it, it's ruined. I'm not saying you're doing this, Suzanne, but in general, I think there's a tendency to start with oh, this is ruining my meditation, or this is, you know, I find this for myself, and then there's this moment of oh. What if I just either shut the windows and then just take in the, the background sound? Of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is true, though, that, that if we can, you know, like anything else, if we can just be with it and try to, you know, I was even thinking, oh, you know, their lawn is going to look really beautiful after <laughs> I was trying yeah, yeah. to be positive right. about it, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you know, you think about a lot of the, a lot of our teachers studied in Burma and Southeast Asia, India, and it, with extreme noise, pots and pans clanging, and noises in the streets, and that eventually became not an issue. You know, that's uh, right. So that all of this is good grist for our practice still, you know, that there's actually a way to be with unpleasantness where you're not so thrown off by it. Um, I'm not there, but I, I do believe and trust that that is with practice that gets easier. Um, the pleasant stuff is just so much easier to be with, you know, uh, and then we, the neutral things in our lives, we don't tend to notice them as much because they're neutral, but the unpleasant, um, yeah, those can be pretty tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. A comment here. Um, after many years of doing my own yard work, I'm grateful when I hear the landscapers doing their work. It means I will not have to do it, no matter how <laughs> flat the pancake 
<laughs> there are always two sides. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. True. There I know. You go. I know. Yeah. So thank you for joining us this morning, everyone, and for chiming in and um, yeah. being part of our practice. It always is, as as we all know, and why we come, we we really find the benefit of sitting together and, and how um, that makes our practice really enhances our practice. So we're so happy to have you here. Yeah. And of course, very happy to have Tara guiding us and leading us in our practice. Absolutely. So happy to be with everyone. Yeah. So we'll see you again uh, next week, Tuesday and Thursday at 830. And we hope you continue to have a good day. And we will see you soon. Yeah. Take care.